What's the mystery of the three hats? Well, what is that all about? Well, it's one of the key strategies that you can utilize to build stronger church teams in your church. Now, the three hat mystery, what is this all about, John? When I deal and work with staff and with key leaders in our church, I would talk to them about the three hats that I wear. One is, this is all metaphoric, you understand, but you can do the physical thing if you like. One is a baseball cap, which is basically indicating, hey, we're in a relaxed mode here. We're in a family mode. The second hat is a battle helmet, a helmet that you wear when you go to war. And the third hat is a hard hat that you wear on a construction site. Now, these three hats come out of the scripture in Philippians 2, and Paul talks about Epaphroditus. He calls him his brother, family member, baseball cap, his fellow worker, someone who's laboring together with him, hard hat, construction site. And then he talks about him being a champion of the faith, someone who's standing strong with him, the battle helmet. So I love when working with people for them to understand the context of any serious conversation that we're having or any informal conversation. I would actually train our staff in this. At times, I'm going to have my baseball cap on. We're family. We're informal. We're relaxing. We're just hanging out here. We're just having fun. At other times, I got my hard hat on. We're going to talk about your goals, your work, how effective you're being in your ministry area, how, how great is your department doing. I mean, these can be tough conversations. I'm not going to do those conversations with a baseball hat on. I'm going to do them with a hard hat on. We're at work. Let's go for it. Then other times, I'm going to put the battle helmet on and say, hey, we've got to take territory. We've got to move forward. We've got to rise up. We've got to be strong. We have to be courageous. As the Lord said to Joshua multiple times in Joshua 1, be strong, be courageous, get into the territory, the land that I've given you through the means that I've given you. And I love this three hat strategy. It's one of the ways that over 30 years of pastoring, we built stronger church teams in our church. Now, a second key strategy in building stronger church teams is to pray the prayer of Jesus. What's the prayer of Jesus? Is it the Lord's prayer? No, it's not. It's interesting that Jesus actually didn't tell us to pray for many things. He he said, if you're in Jerusalem during the Great Tribulation, pray that it doesn't happen in winter. So basically, you can escape and maybe escape easier in some of them, winter. If you don't live in Jerusalem, you don't need to be praying that prayer an awful lot, I don't think. But there's a prayer that you and I and our churches should be praying regularly. Pray the Lord of the harvest to raise up laborers for the harvest field. And I think this is a great prayer that pastors should be praying in their Sunday morning meetings, in their Sunday services, in their prayer gatherings, in their small groups. Lord, raise up workers. If you're going to build strong church teams, you need the Lord to be the primary mover and stirrer and motivator of people who are on the church team or people who are thinking about being on the church team or people who have no idea what a church team is, that the Lord would move upon them. And you can pray this prayer in all sorts of settings because I think Jesus is listening for that prayer. I mean, you go through the New Testament, there's not many things Jesus says, pray for this, pray for that. But this prayer, because he told us to pray for it, I reckon the Lord's kind of got a real ear for it. He's really kind of hanging out, waiting to hear from you about that prayer. Now, if you want to build stronger church teams, have a look in the description to the link I've got. It's in the description to a three-minute quiz. It's a short evaluation of how you can get more people serving in your church. Links down below, jump in, only take you three minutes, it's all free, and you'll get a great report, personalized report, about the sort of things that are going well in your church in terms of people serving, and the sort of things that you could improve to make even more people serve in the life of your church. Now, the third key strategy to build stronger church teams is, is having what I call support and supervision meetings with department leaders. Now, most churches have at least a worship department leader, a children's department leader. Maybe your church has a small groups department leader, a men's ministry department, maybe a women's ministry department, maybe a new people's department, maybe a volunteer serving director. I don't know. But churches have at least two main departments, worship 
and children's leaders. So here's a question I have. If you're a worship leader or a children's leader running a department in your church or you're a pastor, how often do you meet? Pastor to worship director, pastor to children's director. How often do you sit and talk through the challenges that that department leader's got? How often do you sit and ask them, how can I help you? How often do you sit and say, what can we do to improve what our worship team is doing? What can we do to improve what our children's ministry is doing? These support and supervision meetings are absolutely crucial to build stronger church teams. One of the shocks I got when I, when I started consulting over 10 years ago now amongst churches around Australia, Europe, the UK, and in different parts of the world, um, doing a lot of consulting, is I was shocked how often pastors didn't meet with their key department leaders. They could go six months without a sit-down, what I call a support and supervision meeting that's kind of formal. It's the hard hat meeting that you've got to ask questions, to chat about goals, to look at improvements, to say, where can I help you? How can I do my role better as a pastor? I was shocked how many pastors don't do this regularly, routinely, habitually. If you're a pastor, start doing these meetings. They'll be brilliant. They'll be loved by your department leaders. If you're a department leader who doesn't have these meetings with your pastor, start having them. Just ring them up and say, Pastor, I want to meet with you every month to talk about my department. Just 45 minutes of your time every month, every six weeks. Can I meet with you and talk through what we're doing, how we're trying to do it, how you can help me, how I can support you and your vision? You can initiate that with your pastor if your pastor has not been doing it. The fourth way, the fourth key strategy to build stronger church teams, and this is for pastors. Pastors, get together your department leaders, the worship director, kids director, youth director, small groups director, new people. Get them together about every six weeks, maybe every month, two months, whatever works for you. Get them together for 90 minutes and have some food and some drink and some fellowship, have a coffee, have some nice food there, get some really kind of nice nibbles going with your food and and sit around and pray together, talk together, strategize together, share some good news, talk about things that are working, a bit of vision sharing, a bit of kind of motivation for the team, a bit of training for that team, and just do the ministry you've got to do together as a team. And Again, uh, one of the shocks I got in my consulting is how few pastors do this regularly. I mean, you don't have to do it that often. You can do it once a term if it works for you. Some of you want to do it every six weeks, whatever. But at least three or four times a year, getting those department directors together and just loving them, just giving them great hospitality, inspiring them, encouraging them, putting on a putting on a bit of a video. Take one of the videos here from the Grow a Healthy Church channel, play it and use it as a fire starter, a discussion starter to talk about even how to build stronger church teams in your church. Do this again. I think this will transform your church world and your church life. Okay, the fifth strategy. This is a key strategy to build stronger church teams in your church is to develop a culture of what I call the assistant leader culture. Don't let a small group go without having an assistant leader. In fact, I believe having two assistant leaders is even better. Don't let your greeting team just exist without a culture of, right, where's the trainee greeter? Where's the trainee greeter we can get involved on the team? Who's an assistant to the main greeters we've got? In your children's ministry, Who are the assistant leaders? And your church might be sizable. You might have different departments in your children's ministry and you've got a leader over the toddlers. Well, who's the assistant leader for the toddlers? Well, we've only got three leaders. We don't really need an assistant, do we? Well, you may not need one, but I think you want one because you want an assistant leader culture in your church. Your church will thrive. Your church dreams will do way better if there's an assistant leader culture where people are going, you know what, it's not just about me doing the role, fulfilling the duties, getting the work done. It's actually me doing it with someone else. It's interesting, isn't it? When Jesus sent the disciples out, it was two by two. 
He sent them out not just by themselves, but they had a companion. They had someone to walk with. And I think church teams, church groups, every aspect of church is done better when you've got an assistant leader culture where you just look through every department of your church and you put assistant leaders in. Now, you might think, well, I have enough trouble finding primary leaders, let alone assistant leaders. Well, let's go back to prayer too. Pray the Lord of the harvest. Begin to see God. Begin to believe God. And can I suggest this to you? Put it into your organizational chart. It may be in your head, that chart, or on paper. doesn't matter. Put in a little box that says assistant leader of every leadership role. Does your children's director have an assistant? Does your worship director have an assistant? Create them. And you know what you get out of that? A leadership pipeline. Okay, the last strategy, the key strategy to build stronger church teams. Number six is whenever you get together with leaders, make sure good news is shared. Train your leaders to bring a good news story to any support meeting, supervision meeting that you've got, any operations team, getting your department leaders, train them to bring that. Hunt down good stories yourself. Be ready to tell a good story of what the Lord is doing in your life and in the life of your people. And look, it may be as simple as, you know, this morning, I was just med meditating my way through Galatians and this verse really comforted my heart. It strengthened my heart. And just to share that verse with someone that, you know what it says to them? One, you're a Bible person. Two, you've got to walk with Jesus. And three, you've got something to share that elevates other people. And I think if you have this culture of when we get together with people, we're talking about the good thing God is doing in my life or in someone else's life. It might be someone coming to Christ. It might be someone getting baptized in water. It might be someone getting filled with the Spirit. It might be someone sharing their faith at work and inviting someone to church. It might be someone who saw someone say yes to that invitation and come to church. It might be the fact that someone's defeated an, an addiction they've got. It might be someone who's been healed. It might be someone who's had a breakthrough in mental health, whatever it is. What's the good news story? Now, obviously, you've got to protect people's privacy and have permission to share those things in a, any sort of setting outside the one-on-one -on -one conversations. But once you've got that permission, ask people, um, I'm in a leaders meeting this week. Can, can I share the good news you've shared with me? Um, if you feel if you're comfortable for me to do that, am I able to do that? If they say no, great, let it go. All good. Go hunt down another good news story. So there you go. Six key strategies. Jump in to the quiz, the three-minute quiz down there. Hit the like button, hit subscribe, be a supporter of the channel, and do the three-minute quiz. It will help you build a culture of serving within your church.